Hello and welcome to another Pixie Maker tutorial. Today is a Patreon request from Morgan Douglas who wanted to see how a live system would work in PGM. So with that said, let's get started. All right, so for this video, I have made a sample project called Full Loop Live System. You can get this and also remember that Patrons get this link for free. So when you open up the project, you're going to see a few different scenes. You're going to see a title scene, an add live scene. This is where you're going to be adding lives. You're going to have a save point. Then you're going to have two normal damages, which is just a normal uh, touch. Then you'll have a fall. Then you'll have a spike. And then a crushing type situation. And then the last scene, you're going to have a timed event. Basically, when you enter this scene, if you don't leave the scene within a certain amount of time, you'll die and lose a life. And so, yeah, basically some pretty easy scenes. As far as menus go, it has an example of a, just a quick HUD, mostly displaying stats. It, there, um, I'm not sure if there's a pause menu. There might be. But uh, it does have a game over. So, for instance, when you go and you play it, you can have just here's your title screen. And then, again, you're, you have your score. Now, another thing, too, is that um, if, you're, if you get so much score, you'll also get a life. So, here's just a life pickup. And boom, you get a life. And then also, if you stand in this, these uh, blue particles, you'll get score. And then when you get 50,000, you'll get another life. All right. So then you can go and we can save and this will say whether you are saving or reloading. You'll see more about this uh, later. Now, uh, real quick while I'm here, I do recommend, I highly recommend that your saves and checkpoints are separate scenes and that they just, they don't have anything going on with them as far as like enemies or collectibles or things like this. This is, this is like the epitome of what I do anymore for, for save points. They're their own scene just for, a check, just for a save point. And a lot of games do this. It's just the safest way um, to go about your reloading. All right, so now you just have, you have a enemy touch damage. And you'll notice that when you die, you lose a life. And then you reload on the save point. So then you can fall. You'll lose all damage. And you'll lose a life. You'll get reloaded. Notice you get reloaded with full life. Then a spike will kill you instantly. Uh, if you go over here, there's a crushing right here. It'll crush you. There you go. And then the last one is the timed event. I'll just show off real quick. And so, yeah, here's the timer. It's going down. And if you hit zero, it will kill you. All right. Now I've, I'm losing lives. So now what happens is, is notice that I'm just respawning right now. But if I have, let's see, not that will bring me down to zero lives. So now if I have zero lives, it's going to bring up the game over screen in which I'm going to be able to continue or in this case, return to the title. So if I continue, it'll reload and we go from there. So I guess I'll just go over some of the logic here. So we have a player here. When it gets hit, it does a common action hit. This is a very common thing that I do for getting hit. Now, if you're dead, you're going to go like this to the dead state. And then it's going to check if it's a reload or if there's no more lives. That's pretty simple. I used a common variable for lives. So it's checking if it's equal to or less than zero. Then we're going to trigger the no more lives. And we're going to show the game over screen. Now, I highly recommend your game overs are done like this. This is the only way that I do game over screens anymore. And what this avoids um, is uh, you can access this from any scene, basically. And what I mean by that is if you have a transition, if you have a scene that is a game over, like let's just say that you had to create a scene called you know, game over. And then in the transition here, you'd have to have this game over and every scene you would have to have a link to and a link to like this. And then any scene with a checkpoint, you'd have to have a link to and then or, or title screen like this. And then you run the risk of objects not resetting, run the risk of certain things not resetting. So I highly recommend just get rid of the spaghetti. And when it's a game over type situation, you throw up a menu scene that is game over. You can do it in any scene now. And like this, game over uh, a layer, just create a layer, make a game over. 
And then in the game over logic, th these are the only things I recommend is to load a file or when you go back to your title screen, reset the game. And this reset comes from a plugin, reset game. It's an official plugin. So you just add official plugin reset. And this is going to reset everything. And which is very important because if you just go back to the title screen and then you go and create a new game, you might not properly have reset everything. And while it's easy to reset switches and variables and stuff like that, especially with the, we have a reset runtime action right here, reset switch variable runtime action where you can, you know, select all of these. So I, I understand that these are here, but now you'd have to go through every object as well. Um, but that's not even the main issue. The main issue is that if you have certain, let's see, I don't think I have any on here, but if you have certain things that are maintain state at end of scene and you don't reset them properly, now you're gonna go start a new game and it's not gonna be reset. So I highly recommend to just use a game over menu as your thing or as your uh, game over event with the option of just continue with load a file or a title screen with reset game. It will save a lot of headaches. And while there are cooler methods and systems out there for PGM, this is the most solid way to go. All right, so if we continue on, we can see that if we just reload to the checkpoint, then we're just minusing one to the lives, and then we're applying a screen, and then we are loading uh, without the project variables and stuff like this. The rest of it is pretty basic. It's just stuff that I've done before. So lives. Now, just to, to note on the HUD, that's actually where I'm capping the lives at. So the pickup life is just adding a life. It's my HUD that is actually capping it if it gets over the max allotted amount of lives. And then the save point is just my general uh, system save point where I have a temp save switch I turn on and then I save it. If the temp save switch is on, because you go and you say, uh, don't keep on game save right here. If the temp save switch is not on, then it's going to re reload. If it is on, then it's going to say saved and it's just going to save real quick. And so that's how that works. I have a video on that if you're more interested in that. And then, yeah, you can just see some designs of these of certain enemies and things to do. So, yeah, I hope the sample helps you out. And thank you for the Patreon request. If you have any questions, comments below, Steam forms, we'll get you figured out. And with that said, I'll see you at the next video.